Hello everyone, welcome to Physics Pathfinder. Today we are continuing with E1, which includes three important aspects in atomic and nuclear physics. The first aspect being the distance of closest approach, which is a very critical parameter in understanding atomic interactions. Secondly, we are going to investigate the deviations from Rutherford alpha scattering experiment and going and also going to shed light on the limitations of classical atomic model. Followed by, lastly, we are going to see the concept of nuclear density and provide insights into the concentration of matter within atomic nuclei. So before we start our session today, let me remind you to like and sus subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for daily updates. So if you have seen my previous video, we had I had a detailed video on alpha scattering experiment. In the alpha scattering experiment, we had seen that when an alpha particle from a radioactive source, a positively charged alpha particle, when passed through a gold foil, as per the classical theory, which was plum pudding model, the expectations were that the alpha particle shouldn't deviate more. Most of the alpha particles or all the alpha particles should have a very slight deviations and all of them should behave in the same pattern. But the results were different. If you can see the second diagram, the deviations, majority of the alpha particles went undeviated. Some of the alpha particles deviated through a very small angle, probably lesser than 10 degrees and very, very few alpha particles were backscattered through an angle which is greater than 90 degrees, sometimes even 182. So this gave the conclusion that atom is almost empty and there is a small concentrated positively charged nucleus with a very small density which is at the center. So it is highly positive and occupying a very small space in comparison to the size of an atom. Now let's understand various background information to study mm -hmm. further. If we can look at this animation, when the positively charged alpha particle is bombarded to, to a positively charged gold nucleus, this is what was seen the alpha particles came a distance closer to the nucleus and after that it stopped for a while and retraced its path. It went back along the same path just like repulsion. What is this distance? This distance that the alpha particle has come closer to the nucleus is called as the distance of closest approach. So let's define distance of closest approach. Distance of closest approach is the distance between any two charged particles, like alpha particles and the gold nucleus in this term. So the alpha particles come a distance closer, not more than the distance of closest approach, and after that, it goes back. So this plays a very critical parameter to understand various spatial aspects in atomic and subatomic interactions. Later, a moving alpha particles will have kinetic energy. So the energy possessed by an object on account of its motion in atomic and nuclear physics, it is the movement of particles like protons, neutrons, or protons and electrons, which are within an atom in a nuclear system. Next is potential energy. We all know that potential energy is on account of the position and configuration of an object. In atomic physics, it refers to the electrostatic potential between two charges, probably a positively charged alpha particle and a positively charged gold nucleus will have the electrical potential energy or the electrostatic potential energy, which is again on account of its relative position with respect to the nucleus. We'll see 
what were the deviations that we are going to see in the alpha scattering experiment. The hypothesis was major part of the alpha particles would go undeviated or with a very small deviations. But the experimental results did not match the predictions. These deviations that you can see in the alpha particles could be due to the finite size of the nucleus or other multiple scattering units. We are going to investigate on that too. Later, we are going to see about nuclear density. Nuclear density is the measure of the concentration of the nuclear matter, which is inside the nucleus of an atom. It describes how tightly the protons and neutrons are packed within the nucleus and plays a very critical role in understanding nuclear properties and reactions. We are going to complete the derivation of the distance of closest approach using the concept of law of conservation of energy. Now, law of conservation of energy basically implies that in an isolated system where there are no external forces, total energy before the interaction should be equal to the total energy after the interaction. This basically means that the energy cannot be created or destroyed. You can only transform the energy from one form to another. Here, the energies could be the kinetic and potential energy. So necessarily, we are going to talk about total potential energy before the interaction and total ener potential energy after. So if you can look at the setup here, when an alpha particle is moving, moving alpha particles will have maximum kinetic energy. And as it comes closer to the nucleus, it becomes slower and slower and it reaches a point where it stops moving. That's when it has highest potential energy. So you can see the law of conservation of energy. The entire kinetic energy of the moving alpha particle is getting converted to maximum potential energy at the point of closest approach. Here we are going to use a very important derivation Derivation is not in syllabus, but we can see the equation that radius of an atom is directly proportional to the cube root of the nucleon number. You can note down to the cube root of mass number or nucleon number. So any nucleus with a higher nucleon number will have a bigger radius. So here R0 is the empirical constant, which is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 meters. A, as you know, is what is inside the nucleus, which is protons plus neutrons. So using this derivation, we are also going to investigate about nuclear density. So as we had discussed, using the law of conservation of energy, the initial kinetic energy of Alpha particles is basically based on its mass and velocity. The initial potential energy is on account of its charge and configuration and its position, how far it is away from the nucleus. Final kinetic energy is after the interaction with the nucleus as it reaches the distance of closest approach. At the point closest to the nucleus, after the interaction, what is the change in its velocity? And that will account for the final kinetic energy. In the similar way, what is the change in the final potential energy because of the change in the position and configuration with respect to the nucleus? Mm -hmm. So as we can see here, when an alpha particle comes closer to the nucleus, the entire energy initially is only kinetic energy. But once it comes closer to the nucleus, at the point where it has just stopped, has reached the nucleus and it is stopping at that position, the entire energy is only the electrostatic potential energy, which is the electrical potential energy, which is KQQ over R, where capital Q is the charge of the nucleus and small q is the charge of the alpha particles. 
So if you can see here, if you know the proton number of a nucleus, if there are Z protons in a gold nucleus and the charge of each proton is plus E, then the total charge of the nucleus is proton number times the charge. While helium nucleus has two protons, so it has a charge plus two E. So if you substitute all of the equations in the electrical potential energy equation, we have that ZE is the charge of capital Q, 2E is the charge of small q. So we have the equation 2ZKE square over R0 or R, which is the distance of closest approach. Now this gives you an important relation that energy and the radius of an atom is inversely related. Very important part. As the radius increases, the energy of alpha particles reduces. So can we tell that the you know, atoms which are extremely small with a smaller nucleon number, with a smaller radius, will have a high energy of particles. It will have, it will be highly energetic. So now if we can substitute the values, like K is the Coulomb's constant, Z is the number of protons, which is 79 for the Coulomb nucleus. E is charge of a proton, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and square of that. If you substitute the energy of alpha particle as a certain value, which is 7.68 mega electron volts, again, electron volts come converted to joules, so you time it with 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. Substituting all the values, we get the radius of the nucleus is 3 into 10 to the power minus 15 meters. Now, is this Now, this is nothing but the radius of the cold atom, which is 3 into 10 to the power minus 14 meters. Of the cold atom, which is 3 into 10 to the power minus 15 meters. If we can go back to the Rutherford's alpha scattering model. Quick review. Rutherford's alpha scattering model proposed us that the nucleus is highly concentrated, positively charged at the center, and the electrons are orbiting around it. Most of the atom is empty, and it is only having a concentrated, positively charged nucleus at the center, occupying a very small space. Now let's see the deviations of the Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment looking with the explanation of what happened and why it happened so. The observed backscattering of alpha particles strongly deviates from the prediction that the only force existing between the alpha particles and the cold nucleus is the electrostatic force of repulsion that did not apply at energies beyond 27.5 because if there would have been repulsion, there would have been a lot of alpha particles backscattering. So the only assumption of electrostatic repulsion did not work. Then what can we tell? If we project alpha particles with energies more than 27.5, it overcomes this force of repulsion and comes into a close contact into the nucleus. It enters the nucleus and the force there is the strong nuclear force. This strong nuclear force is not repulsive. It is attractive in nature. So now the interactions due to this strong nuclear force explains us very clearly that the alpha scattering very much reduces for big angles 
where alpha particles are having energy beyond 27.5, where they come very, very close to nucleus, and the force that is encountered is not the electrostatic force of repulsion, but it is the strong nuclear force. So lastly, if we can summarize, Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment originally assumed that the alpha particles had the force of repulsion, electrostatic repulsion, but for particles beyond 27.5, it comes into close proximity to the nucleus and the interaction with the nucleus is through strong nuclear force. So very clearly we can see that the number of alpha particles backscattering and the angle is inversely related. So experimental data now bears out and clearly suggests that Rutherford's formula is correct. And the number of assumptions that were made for this formula, the main one being that the electrostatic repulsion is not the force for energies beyond 27.5 and the forces that encounters that holds the alpha particles with the nucleus is the strong nuclear force. Let me give you one important exam tip. The greatest deviations from the Rutherford scattering occurs at energies where alpha particles have a smaller radius. Very clearly I had explained this. So for a smaller nucleus, the energy of particle will be extremely high because it's inversely related. Lastly, let's see what is nuclear density. Density is mass over volume and volume is four by three pi r cube for a sphere. So substituting the value of the radius, we can very clearly see the inverse relation of density with the radius. So this implies that larger nuclei with a higher atomic nuclear number, the nuclear number where it is higher, nuclear density is less. That is, the nucleus is very tightly bound and the size of the nucleus is very small. Density is higher there. So smaller nuclei will have high density and larger nuclei will have smaller density. So that's all for today's session. Do like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for the latest updates.